Alrighty, Doc here from North America. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Depends. Let's see what we got going on here this morning. Um, I was looking at the Swiss. You know, we, we start off with the Swiss in the morning of late the last four or five months. I find it very clearly describing the action we see in the dollar. What's got my attention this morning is that uh, you know it goes. You can see it on the chart there. You can see it through J4X, and you can see it through my Chicago Quant. Notice how it it's going up and down. It doesn't have a lot of conviction right now. I know it's that time of the year where markets can be really wishy-washy. That's a an expression around here. In other words, it's a an expression of of uh, how they you know it's doesn't it, it's sideways chop you know uh, what other way to describe wishy-washy not a lot of passion in other words not a lot of conviction not a lot of care nobody cares in some ways and it, it, it caught my eye I'm looking at that this morning as a trader and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking look at this thing this thing does not have a direction I mean here we are you can see it's pressing up on the weekly buy here in our math same time it's pushing down in the cell you know as J4X confirming that action also at the same time. You see here the two red hinkies, the hinky bars. Uh, in our case here, we have a red dot there three days back. We have no dot yesterday, and we have a green dot today. It's you know it's the market itself in the you know the dollar itself is, I guess in many ways, as much as we all know, the quantitative easing and the, the central banks are the buyer of last resort, they do what they want, when they want, you know, we know the power of it. A lot of people don't realize that or they won't talk about it on the financial network, so we do here. And uh, and you wonder what what is running through the bankers' minds, you know, the central bank's minds. That's what I'm thinking this morning. I'm really am. I'm looking at it and I'm saying, what the hell are they thinking? You know, what, are they, what, what is running through their minds? I mean, this action, you can see, we're seeing this occur in many of the products. See here how, let's, let's scrunch this up on the Chicago Quant chart. We'll do the same thing on the, I don't, we don't have it marked on the uh, J4X, but we can scrunch it up. And you see how it's chopping sideways. Here we've kind of documented it in a sense. You can see uh, those two red lines, those dot dash lines here and there. And you can see that how much over time it's played with that area you can see it. It, it it's definitely locked in that area for some reason in this case here it drifted underneath it whatever pushed it underneath it pushed at it and you got the the oscillation on the opposite side of it where it broke through it same distance from the these lines here so the distance between here and that high and this distance here from that line and the low pretty much symmetrical now um, and it goes on for months upon months, all the way up until literally, uh, what, is that? what is that? That's August of uh, 2020. And so I go back to the beginning, you know, today itself, the trading in today. And I wonder, are they that rudderless? That's what's running through my head. Matter of fact, you can see now, Chicago Quant is trying to put a, a volatility signal up at the moment. Let's just widen that out. Oop, it, yeah, you can see it there. There's a red and a green dot right underneath each other. You know, it, it just shows how directionless we are right now. The markets have no confidence, clarity, concept. And at the same time, we've gotten some, some decent noise. When you really look at the last three days, that's pretty wide ranges compared to any other set of three days. You know where it's going in no direction I mean it goes down it goes up almost the same amount it goes down again you know it's, it, it's a little bit wider if you notice I mean you can have these one days here but we're, we're starting to get some action like dynamite being piled up into a pile getting ready to explode on some level so I mean that's just my my off-the-cuff you know and what's floating through my head as a trader I'm looking at it I'm saying what is what are they doing? You know, what are, what are these central banks doing? Where where are their heads at right now? I mean, um, you know, I, I've been listening since the Jackson Hole conversation last Friday. 
Uh, they're saying things like um, a lot of the pontiffs, I guess you call them, people in, in the media and so forth, uh, hedge fund managers, so forth. I mean, listening to them say stuff like, uh, you know, well, I wish that he had been more committable, or I wish he didn't say it was transitory. Couldn't he just say, we've got inflation right now. Let's see where it goes. You know, that type of attitude. And, and that's starting to... I don't know, it's starting to pop out in my head, and I'm watching the action in this, because I really think that the Swiss shows us the real, let's say the the battle that's going on in the uh, the dollar with the rest of the other pairs trades in the world. So Now let's take a look at uh, the Euro, and, and it doesn't have that look at all to it. It seems to have picked the direction, and we talked about this, it seems to be much more, I think we did some headlines three or four weeks ago, or two, about two or three weeks ago, I said, you could see that the euro is starting to become, like, become the leader out of, out of nowhere uh, after many, many months of just following along with the rest. It seems to be picking up confidence, just like we saw that in the Swiss. The Swiss was showing that characteristic four and five months ago, and we've been following the Swiss because of that. You know, starting off the webinar with the Swiss. Now we're seeing this action occur in the Euro. Now this is, I know this is, this is a heartthrob for us American traders that have been involved in currencies for over 45 years. We were always hoping that there'd be a competing product out there. I mean, that does sound kind of funny, but when you're a trader and you're a rocket scientist like myself, where we're trading volatility and we're trading, we don't really care where these products go, we're just trading them. You know, we were always hoping for a good, solid pairs trade that you could trust. And that's what we were hoping for when the euro was created and the Deutschmark was removed. And then, you know, the rest of the foreign currencies were slowly removed. So this is really, you know, hitting hitting, hitting to me right now. It's, it's, it's standing in my face and saying, hey, look at me. This is what's going on right now. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, you know, what, what is running through these guys and gals' heads at these central banks? So... All right, and you can see the strength here. We've been in the daily buy for, I don't know, five or six or seven days. What does it say on the fact check? Six days there, there it is. On the line 14, you can see it as we highlight the fact check spreadsheet. Right there, six days in the daily buy going on a seventh, and it's not exactly looking too weak, is it? Um, and at the same time, look at the, the weekly. <laughs> it's trying to go underneath again, just like the, the Swiss is trying to climb up again. They're now, and on a longer-term trend, these two are starting to unite, which is very interesting. Um, let's jump over to, I don't see any questions, so we're just going to keep on rolling along with this train of thought here. And we're going to take a look at the, uh, the cable. Let's see, where is it at? Right there. And before we leave that, let's just take a quick look on the J4X, the Euro. Just to confirm that it's doing what it should be doing, you know, our indicator. There you go. Daily buy for a bunch of days. Bunch of green hinkies. So hinky bars, you know, hinky ashy bars. All right. Now we're going to throw cable in, see what the cable's doing, see if it's just marching along just like the other majors. If you can even call the old currencies, the, the six pairs trades, majors anymore. I mean, there's liquidity in a lot of these what they used to refer to as minor pairs trades. All right, you can see here, now the cable is not exactly exploding. It's the weakest of them all. Let's take a look at it up here. Matter of fact, you can see it on J4X where it tried to roll over and now it's popping again. I mean, how many times do you see that happen? Not much. I mean, this one here was interesting. It tried to roll over. <clears throat> Excuse me, it tried to roll over. Let me drink a sip of water. It tried to roll over there and then lift it again. So maybe this is the beginning of just another pop and more weakness in the dollar. And that's what the math keeps on trying to scream at us. Ah, that's good water. All right. Uh, where we, oh, yes, we're going over to it on the... Chicago Quant. No, oh, it is. It's up there already. Okay. 
you see that it's trying to turn back up into let's see went into the buy here went into a sell there so we need to let's grab one of these just move it over sell there let's grab this buy here so and now it's back into the buy and seems to be holding up right there went into the buy and where are we on the fact check? Let's just double check it and see how that played out. Yeah, it's two days in a buy now. So we're going on a third day. Um, and at the same time, the weekly's heading down. You know, I, I just, like I said, I, I don't see a real clear picture right now in any of these products. They, they seem to be lost. They seem to be just, you know, just chopping up and down, which is... Usually that's what happens in a triangle or a, or a resting spot, you know, uh, before they make the next big move in some con, you know direction with a lot of conviction. So uh, don't be surprised, traders, if we start to get some real action out of this coming into the next, uh, you know, two weeks or something like that. It has that look to it. Now here in the states, um, we end our summer officially. Uh, going into this long three-day weekend coming up, which will be, we're, we're closed on Mondays. I'll be here. I mean, it's an electronic thing. It's not like I have to travel to an exchange and talk or trade. So I'm very happy to always do my webinar uh, during the, the holidays here. Um, we do it even on Thanksgiving. The holiest day of America. <laughs> or maybe the second holiest day. The first holiest day would be the 4th of July. Mm. All right, so that's where we are, and it caught my eye, and I think I want to run back to the uh, Swiss again, just to show you the uh, what you can see is how it's screaming in our faces, right there. That's and that's interesting action. You know, it's zipping up and down. I don't know, you know, traders. It's been a very strange 13 years with quantitative easing. There's a lot that we can talk about, a lot that we can, you know, in the future. It'll be interesting who's doing the PhD. Uh, it'll be, you know, it'll be fascinating, you know, in years to come. I hope I, I live to see it, that somebody does a PhD in the quantitative easing, you know, the way Bernanke did one in the, the Great Depression type of thing, you know, and he, his thesis was, you know, what did the, the, the central bank do wrong or what did the Federal Reserve do wrong? And he talked about different concepts and got his PhD on that, his economics, and it'll be interesting. Will somebody wake up and do a PhD in it and say, you know, uh, you know, but if it's obviously hindsight at that point when they're doing it because they'll be looking at history. See, we're, we're still in the middle of this. That's the amazing thing is after 13 years, we're still like as if it's 2008. It's like, you know, going into 2009. It, it, you know, I mean, we're still in the middle of this mess. It's still not going away uh, as much as uh, you have to imagine 17 trillion not billion but trillion uh, dollars worth of investments that are in the negative that's not 17 million that's not 17 billion it's 17 trillion we're in the thick of it probably a good reason why no one wants to talk about it besides myself uh, it is definitely probably terrifying a lot of people you know I mean you have to imagine Doc is gifted with the opportunity to have a, a, a mathematical figuration uh, configuration or you know a tool that keeps me pretty much safe um, and so can you imagine not having that tool and having to deal with 17 trillion dollars that's invested in minus I mean that's an ugly thing hey metal how you doing I'm still in that gold doc, I would like to see the 1780 before getting in. What do you think? I'll tell you, you know, they've done their best. You know, it plays right into my conversation here today. They've done their best to keep gold down. Robin and I talk about it a lot. We are, we are uh, amazed how well they've done. But then when you have that financial power, it isn't that amazing. 
let's put it up there for a second and take a look and see. And there is, uh, there it is right there. Uh, it was flirting with, remember yesterday we were flirting with a weekly sell. It's cleaned itself up. It's it's lifted back up. I mean, the green line was down below. I think we could even, you know, find a chart from uh, yesterday morning showing you how it was minus. It was playing with the weekly sell. It's over with. You know, it's like a, like a like a rainstorm passing by. For it to go to 1780, you know, you would think, you know what? Maybe that's maybe because you're hooked on that. Um, and and let me let me phrase this so that you can appreciate what I'm saying. Maybe because you're looking at it. And it's talking to you that 1780. Maybe we don't see it. In other words, if it's that clear to you that 1780 would be a great buying opportunity, maybe you're not the only one. Now let's go over to J4X and get a broader view of the gold. But you see what I'm saying? It's not you personally. It's it's the fact that you're identifying that 1780 area. I wonder how many other traders are out there identifying with that, or institutions, or the central banks itself. Um, you know, you would think we'd get back up to this uh, almost 2,000 area. You know, I mean, we're only 1,800. It's only $200 away. There, I mean, everybody and their sister knows we've got some type of inflation thing going on here. You know, who would sell this product? Who would have the tenacity, the the uh, arrogance? To sell this product when all we see is prices climbing, you know, inflation sticking its head out, you know, intimidating society right now. That's why I think some of the money managers, and obviously not the talking heads, they're, they're too scared to talk about the truth, but the money managers starting to say stuff like, can he say honestly, you know, who I mean by say, he, pow, couldn't he just have said, hey, We've got inflation kicking up. We're going to monitor it. We're going to participate and see what we can do about it. Not like, oh, don't take it serious. These money managers are paid to take things serious. They're not paid not to take things serious. Even if they're not serious, they're paid to take things serious, and they can't walk around claiming that they're not serious. All right. So you can see here, maybe, is that the 1780? I guess that is that right there in the hinky ashy. You see that? That's at 1780 area. Maybe money is looking at that and saying that would be a great place to buy. I'm waiting. Maybe this thing's going to go find a way to bust out of that. I mean, we've got this over here. I mean, you can see we've been making lower highs. What if we start taking out these highs, these two highs right here? Your chances of getting that 1780 are going to get slimmer and slimmer. Um, I'm not trying to talk you into a trade at all. I'm just saying. It may be you're picking up the right thing. The question is, will it go back to there? I thought it was curious yesterday. Let me go see if I can find something. Um, let me see where I, I could find it. I want to. I want to pull out yesterday morning's chart. Let me see if I can find that. I'm just going to move this out of the way for a second. Go back up and look at that. But let me see if I can put our uh, yes, uh, yesterday's chart up there. And uh, you know, just to emphasize. How much it was acting like it wanted to make that move to the 1780 area, and sure enough, it laughed at it and went away. Okay, so here we go. I got it. Uh, let's see who are gold. There is gold right there. There we go. And where are you? There we go. Right there. There we go. Now this is going to come, we're going to come back down to the, uh, yeah. Uh, let me just download that. Okay, let's see what that, that'll do it. Here it goes. There we go, it's popping up there now. So there it is. Look at that. Yeah, yesterday we started off, you know, um, matter of fact, uh, <coughs> excuse me, let's minimize that again. Kill that. Put that down. You can see that that is yesterday morning the charts that were sent out to everybody. All right? You can see right there. Let's see. Can we? Uh, I think we can ex expand that too, right? Yeah. You can see that right there. It was underneath the weekly sell. The green line was down. Now, let's just take a quick peek, and you're going to see. Look at it now. Less than 24 hours later, basically. Um, 
There's the green line. I mean, it went from being down here, this curve was heading underneath and towards the cell. Uh, 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 the weekly, there's the weekly right there. I'm really emphasizing more than anything else. That's the daily, I'm sorry, the bottom one. See that there? It's, it was curving down and this thing was underneath the zero line. Look at it now. It's got some gusto to it. It's, it's lifting up. Look at, that, look at that difference. So, you know, middle age, it's, it's, uh, I agree with you. You know, I'm sure 1780 would be a good buy, you know, especially with options. So, uh, for those that are out there, uh, middle age likes to trade the options or the binaries. And, uh, you know, without a doubt, when you're taking that least amount of risk, you can afford to buy into something. And if it goes down 50 or 60 bucks, you're not really getting that beat up. It has a limited risk factor, and you're not going to get stopped out. When you buy enough time, it'll bounce back for you a lot of times. Depends on, uh, especially when you're following docs work at the same time. If it's in a weekly buy, it goes down into a sell, and it goes down 30 or 40 dollars, but it can't get into a weekly sell. Chances are, it's going to come back up into the buy and take off and move back up again. And that's what the benefit is of trading the binaries and trading the, the options. You don't get stopped out as much. You're able to stay. You can stay with your conviction. How many times, I'm going to digress just a little bit, but how many times have you heard people say in trading throughout your lifetime or anybody else's lifetime or my lifetime, uh, oh, man, I had the position on, I got stopped out. And then what did happen? Four days later, where was it? Right where I thought it was going. That was the key words right there. Just where I thought it was going. But I got stopped out. GBP, hey, 47, how you doing? Sure, let's jump on the, what's that, the, the GBP, JPY. Let's check out that and see what's going on. But yeah, look at that. That cracks me up, this uh, chart there. Um, now why won't you go all the way down? <laughs> I'm just going to close that one. I'll minimize that for the moment right there. There we are. Now let's, let's check out uh, GBP, JPY. right there that daily buy is still holding up since the last time we looked at it you and I 47 looked at it a couple days ago right and you can see it's holding up it tried to get in look we got a little volatility signal yesterday it's a little bit lower or flattish to the to the day it's been in that weekly sell now since back up in here so from the uh, what is that the 155 ish area and went down to the 149 ish area and now it's uh, sitting around the 151 area. What is that? 155? All right. Yeah. How's that help out? All right. And uh, what's curious is uh, how well it's staying in that weekly cell. You see that there? It's it's a uh, some of these. What I I can say this about that. That's the classic Richard Nixon quote, and that is that. Let me say this about that, and that is that the minor pairs that now have become very liquid and act like uh, major pairs, uh, one thing is for sure, they have become very good at trending, much better than the majors. You, know, they, they, you can see here how many times it goes into a daily buy or sell. It's been in a weekly sell there, what, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, going on a 12th week, right? And what did we have? We had one sell, which was a nice winner, a nice, and it gives you a buy, but you're not taking that, of course. But you don't you don't lose your money, which is nice. And then it goes into another sell and it's a win. Then it goes into another sell and it's a win. There's three three winners, four winners, five winners. Now the fifth one is really sloppy, but the sixth one is a big winner again. So out of what did I say, twelve weeks, it went into six daily sells. So that's not too bad. Now, so one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So out of 11 weeks going on a 12th week, it's going on a daily sell basically six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have to say that the minor pairs have been really good to trade since quantitative easing has been cre created. Got stood out before it, yeah it just fell 40 points uh with oh, oh uh, got stopped out okay i bet you that's what you're saying aren't you 47 i'll tell you 
you know, marry an option or a binary to your, your hard delta, you know, knows the spot or the future that you're trading. It'll help out a lot, that's for sure. Yeah, and you don't need to stop. If you if you use a binary or an option, uh, you know, to protect your uh, your uh, you know your spot or your future position, you don't need to stop. It makes it a lot cheaper, and you sleep better at night too. Yeah, uh, it's been a good trade, you know. It has been a good trading product. All right, uh, where do we go from here, traders? I myself, you know how I am. Doc loves to just take apart different products just for the sake of the fascination of it all. Boop. Let's see, where's it at? There it is. All right, so where, where did we leave? Oh, we were at cable. That's what it was. We were at the cable. Uh, let's see, what am I trading on Dukascopy when I'm trading the currencies? Oh, you're trading spot. They call it cash. It's a good product. As a matter of fact, it's better than the futures. Yeah, change uh, physical delivery. Uh, I think that's what CFDs are. It's for, for physical delivery of it. Currency physical delivery, possibly. I think that's what a CFD is. Yeah, and that's the spot. They have a bunch of different names, you know, for the same thing. Uh, they may be a little bit different in technique, but when you're trading spot, you're trading spot or cash. Yeah, I'm going to Google it too. But I would I would assume it's currency uh, physical delivery. That's what F FD has to be. It's physical delivery, that's for sure. CFD. Uh, here we go. Uh, contract for the di di contract for difference. All right, take it. Key takeaways: A contract for difference is a financial contract that pays the difference in the settlement price between the open and the closing trades. Oh, interesting. So it's in many ways it's a, it's a derivative off of it. It's interesting, but it's still based off the cash. So CFDs essentially also allow, or not also, but essentially allow investors to trade the direction of a security over the very short term on our especially popular in FX and commodity products. So instead of the actual cash, they, they turned, turned it into like a CFD. Probably helps out the arbitrage and liquidity, that type of thing. This is accomplished through a contract between a client and a broker. Yeah, see that makes sense. And they do it in stocks and Forex and so forth. So it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of like a, a future contract, only nicer. I don't, futures contracts are kind of cumbersome. They really are. So CFD trading is defined as buying and selling CFDs with CFD meaning uh, a contract difference. Yeah. Basically, you're, spot, you're trading the cash, but it's a derivative of the cash. So it's fine. Let's see. They, the key difference between a Forex trading the CF, and Forex trading and CFD trading is that the, while the Forex is limited to just currency, CFD contracts cover a broader range of assets right that makes sense so it's it's got it's a margin thing that's pretty much what it comes down to it makes it cheaper for you to trade but you're getting the same bang for your buck how's that sound in other words you're, you're you know you're still getting good leverage out of it i hope that makes sense to you yeah it makes sense to me uh it's just a derivative and a derivative is fine you know, it's it's it all works together. You know, and um, like I said, it's less cumbersome as far as I'm concerned than a futures contract. Future contracts are really kind of cumbersome. They're kind of kind of clunky. <laughs> yeah, they're big and they're they kind of you know they're usually overgunned in margin. That's the problem. You're taking on too much risk for the amount of capital, and that's it. That's what options do or binaries do they reduce your risk enormously for the amount of money to trade it and then the CFD probably does the same exact thing it's a limited transaction so maybe just like it's in many ways it's like a call option or a put option except for it's it has a it instead it trades at the spot price
probably with a tick or two premium or something like that, which is irrelevant because it's not a decaying premium. That's the way I would. I, I don't think it would be a decaying premium unless it, you went out, you went out like you know, fifty days in the thing, you know, or thirty days. But if you're only trading like day intraday situation, I imagine CFDs are almost non-existent when it comes to the premium. I imagine the premium is very small. And since you're in and out of it as a daily trade, the premium doesn't mean anything at all. Because I'm sure it's moving at parity with the cash or the spot. Like I said, it's kind of a crossbreed between options and a, and a, a futures contract. It has a, probably, a, I think it has a limited zone and you're buying that limited zone. I think that's the best way to describe, describe it. So you're not buying like, you know, the one, let's say in this case here, you're talking about the GBPY. You may be trading between 140 and 160 or something like that you know, on an interjay trade. You know, you know, the chances of it exploding like that are almost nothing. So I think that's how that works there. Contract for difference. I think that's pretty cool too. Interesting. All right. Uh, so it's like a zone. You're buying a slice of that cash. All right. Where'd we leave off? Oh, I I know. As we were going to take a look at, if anybody wants to see anything else, we can do that too. But I'm just going to take a quick look at Turkish lira. You see it? Uh, it's flirting with the daily sell right there. Went into the buy for two days and went nowhere. I mean, went high. Went higher by just a hair of its chin. And obviously you wouldn't didn't want to get long in it. You just didn't want to be short at this point. Uh, because we're in that weekly sell now for weeks upon weeks. Now, let's see where we go from here. Let's take a quick look at the euro against the uh, Turkish lira right there. You see there it only lasted one day. And now it's rolling over and we're getting a volatility signal. And all this flirtation with the weekly right there is starting to dissipate and breaking underneath. The, uh, the time manifold there. Oh, cryptos. Let's see what we got on that. Uh, so far, you know, one of the things I find fascinating is Coinbase. Let's see if we can put Coinbase up there to start off with. And then we'll go take a look at the... Uh, uh, so far, they don't seem to have enough history for Ethereum, because I really do like the Ethereum. Nice price range. Let's see. Here's Coinbase, and then we'll take a look at Bitcoin itself. I know they went over the one trillion mark in, uh, in in trades. Where is Coinbase? Where'd you go? There it is. It's it's going back up, which was interesting. Is that uh, this is the life of it right there? Remember that was the first day it was opened at the 250 area, ran all the way up to four, almost a little better than 400 dollars. And now you can see that you know they sold it down. Uh, let's see. You can see our, our weekly is starting to fill in in data. We're in a weekly sell here, and it looks like it's trying to lift back up. Uh, dailies, you know, caught the buy there. Is that it right there? There it is. Caught that buy there for that nice move. Caught the sell for that nice move. Caught the buy right there for a very small upwardly move, and then started to roll over. Went into a sell there for a couple days. Now we're flirting again. Last couple days we're in a buy. Now that's Coinbase. Now let's go over and take a look at uh, uh, where is it at? Right here is Bitcoin. August Bitcoin. Matter of fact, it looks like they've stopped trading it from there, and they they uh, and they're used. They're trading their September contract there now. There it is. So it's. Four days, let me just give it a control R. But it looks like it's four days in a buy at this point. Going on a, f oh, three days in a buy going on a, where is it at right there? Yeah, so it's it's trying to climb up. I, it went up to the $50,000 area here, fell back down, and we're in the buy now for a couple days here. We'll see how they hold that up. Um, let's see, could you check? Uh, deck live cattle. Sure. 
The calls have become cheaper the last four days. Deck live camel. Let's see. Where is that at? That's, that would be right there. There we are. Here is deck live. No, yeah, uh, that's corn. Deck live cattle. I know we have it on here. Let's first look at October because we have it there. Matter of fact, there's April of next year. And you can see it's 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 like a rock. Went into a buy back in here, back in, uh, was that uh, uh, August 6th? It's been in a daily buy. We've been in a weekly buy in this thing for since May. We've been in a weekly buy in this product since May in the 130s area, 130, what is it, started off in the 132, 33 area, and where are we at now? I think I think we're a little bit higher, yeah. Yeah, we're a lot higher. We're in the 142 area, 141 area. All right, now, that's April. Let's take a look at deck. There's deck cattle. Now, deck cattle, you can see right there, um, you know, it, it, it was in a buy since the 12th on a daily. Call it that move. It's in a weekly now uh, since uh, late July. And then let's take a look at... Now, what is that? Why does that keep on popping up? And then let's take a look at... Oh, you're not seeing what I'm looking at. There we go. Sorry about that. There we go. So let's go back to April. So you can see that. So there's April of 2022. And you can see we've been in that long, long, long buy all the way back into May, the beginning of May. And you can see just this one went in and out for a couple days right there and then went into the buy here on the 6th and has been, been in the buy for a couple dollars or a couple cents, however you want to call that. Now here's the deck. Let's go to deck again right there and then let's see what else we got going let's see uh, okay so now here's December you can see it went into the weekly buy in the beginning of May stayed in there for a while then rolled over for a week went right back into a buy again and um, end of July end of July yeah and you can see uh, it's been in a daily buy since uh, the 12th. Now let's take a look at uh, October cattle. Where's those ox? Hockey docky. Right there. Same thing. End of July goes into a buy. Uh, it's been in a daily buy since the 13th on uh, October. And uh, went into a sell yesterday right there. You can see the weakness that's been evolving. Did the other two go into sells? I wasn't even paying attention to the daily. Uh, so we're seeing a little bit more weakness again today. And you can see it's flirting with the weekly sell too. We're, you see right there on the side, we're minus 17 at the moment. Yeah, those back months are something. Uh, they, uh, I guess, you know, it's a combination of reducing the volatility let me just take a look at April real quick yeah, April it's not even flirting with the daily sell doesn't even care look at it can't even break the time manifold they're like uh, we don't care we know that people are going to want hamburger in April and then when you go and look at the deck uh, yeah see deck is doing that it's joining in it's a front month thing you know it's trying but, it, you know, the weekly is not even thinking about going down. Well, yeah, I guess it is. You can see right there. It is breaking the time manifold. Hmm. All right. I'm glad I helped out there. So 47 and middle age. I've been able to answer your questions, and you're welcome to ask for more, too. I just love the idea of looking all the way around. For a lot of us in the currency world, we know that the central bank plays all these games, and so they're 
they're using any product that they can that's denominated in dollars just to be able to have longer short positions without taking the risk. You can always hedge the underlying product and not hedge the currency and the next thing you know you've got a currency position on and it might be in hogs or it could be in soybeans and you know people are going why do you care about the commodities for it and it's like no we don't we just what we're short we're short uh, soybeans and we're long call so we're we're in a straddle we don't really care we're not you know it goes either way we're doing fine and and people go what well, I don't understand what you mean <laughs> Aren't you just long, aren't you short corn or short soybeans? No, we have a straddle on now, and we're low risk. But we have a currency position on at the same time because we did it out, not in dollars, and so that makes us. If you're short soybeans, which means now you have to buy soybeans, which means you need to buy dollars, right? Is that how that works? You have to deliver dollars. Yeah, so you've got to go buy the dollars for us to deliver them. So that makes you short. So and then you can't get the, the Federal Reserve or the U.S. Treasury Department complaining that you're overdoing it or underdoing it in your position. I know it's a little deep in the weeds, as they say, but it is what it is. That's why Doc looks at these things, which we know. Matter of fact, I think uh, uh, you know. Here's something to throw out, especially the middle age. Uh, I think I've, I've had this idea the last couple of weeks. I really think that a lot of the strength in the commodities has been more than just inflation. It has been uh, a way of trading the, the dollar, you know, having a position in the dollar without having to be, uh, you know, having the, the, the Federal Reserve or the U.S. Treasury Department complaining to you that you're manipulating your currency. So you have probably have nation states, you know, countries that are literally putting commodity positions on and uh, you know that doesn't automatically force you to take on the currency makes you short it or long it and so you know it's a way of getting around the uh, government uh, pressuring you to in other words if you went in and just bought dollars they could probably say hey guess what you have too many dollars in your account you need to liquidate some and you'd go okay yeah yeah you're a Federal Reserve you'll tear me apart if I don't or you'll label my country a manipulator. But if you go in and do the same thing with a, with a commodity, all you have to do is offset your commodity with a, an option. And then, you know, you can be long or short extra dollars that way. And they're not going to be on top of your back complaining that you need to cover it. Just a thought there, you know. So, think about it and in, 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 we extrapolate. We take a deeper look at that concept. And imagine... People wanted to be long dollars, right? Or was it short dollars? I guess maybe they wanted to be short dollars. They think it's overpriced. So what they do is they go buy corn or wheat or soybeans or anything big, crude oil and dollars, right? Now that means that they need to go buy dollars. That makes them short dollars. Well, if they if they are short the dollar, and this, the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury think that you're manipulating your currency, they'll tell you to cover it. But boom. If you do it this way, they're not going to say anything to you because they're just going to look at it as like a, a commodity position. I know it sounds like deep in the weeds, but it's it's a way of getting around the the, the uh, interference by U.S. Federal Reserve and government. You know. All right. Uh, let's see, where do we go from here? That was cattle. So what do we do? We'll go back to the currencies. Uh, usually we look at the Canadian. That's it. Let's take a look at the Canadian real quick. And then we're from there, we're going to go over and look at the South African RAND and so forth. Now, Canadian really surprised me. Yesterday, it held up, it, you know, just by the hair of its chinny chin. You can see that there. It was at 0 0.00027. It didn't make it into the cell, even with that red dot thing going on. But today, they're doing it. They're trying to pressure it down. It's pretty much unchanged. And we're in the weekly buy, so you wouldn't take the short to begin with. Like I've said, you are a walk-in encyclopedia of finance. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that's that's the curse I have. You know, that, all these wild ideas cut through my head. You know, it's like, uh, where's Waldo? You know, <laughs> Doc is like, all these wild ideas are flying through my head at the speed of uh, of sound. You know, uh, and so you know, I, I don't. I I guess one thing is for sure. You can say this. If Doc has said anything at all, 
is that he refers to himself as a rocket scientist because that's what they called me when I was up at Wall Street. You know, I, you know, us wonks that do math and markets, you know, and, and do derivatives. And so we are the rocket scientists of the financial world. And so I guess that's my only real curse is that uh, I take on that label. It means we think we think too hard. That's what it means. <laughs> we we think too hard. Indeed. All right, but thank you, Middle Age. All right. Uh, let's see where are we at now. Oh yes, what are we? Let's look at the Canadian, right? So Canadians just kind of zipping and doing its thing. Normally, you know, we looked at the gold. The gold is what gold was up, right? So Canadian should be going down because that should be gaining against the dollar. Another way of playing the back door of. Uh, currency and metals. Now let's take a look at. Uh, uh, oh, I know what it is. Let's look at oil. Last I looked at oil, it was like unchanged. Right there. Now it's down. Okay. It's flirting with the daily sell again. We got a red dot. You see the weekly is still pressing down. This is going on a third week. And it has not exactly, I mean, we went into the weekly sell down in here. We went into the daily buy there, and we're still in the daily buy, and we're still in the weekly sell. I mean, it's, you, you got to wonder, if we can get into a daily sell, this could be very interesting. And maybe we'll see a nice breakdown, you know. Why would they sell oil? I don't know. I mean, maybe a slower world economy, more inflation, I don't know. And it's one of those things, you know, the fundamentals really don't seem to match up anymore to the whole the financial movement itself all right uh, let's check out the South African RAND since we see where gold is oh let me just show you where gold is too uh, let me just put the RAND up there uh, there it is now we'll take a quick peek again at the gold right there and gold is going down now. Okay, yeah, so it's in the minus again. It was higher today, now it's lower today. Uh, so because of that, we would assume that the RAND would be moving, what, up, right? Because it's, gold is going down, but no. You see right there, RAND is moving. Uh, is that the RAND? Yeah, that's the South African RAND. Just double check. Yeah, it's the South African RAND. And so uh, you can see here, the product is moving down, which is kind of nice. You know, I mean, it's you know it's gaining value. Maybe that's a signal of the strength to come in the metals complex. Now let's take a look at silver, just for the sake of silver. Silver's plus for the day, but just down off a little bit. Uh, now let's take a look at the ruble here. I didn't show you the silver. We'll go back to the metals complex and we'll take a quick look through it all. You see, this is like a third day now in a sell on the ruble which means it's gaining some strength against the dollar. Then there's the yen. Now the yen is moving down, uh, so that means it's getting gaining strength against the dollar. But notice the weekly is trying to get into a weekly buy. Then the last one we look at is the peso, which we were thinking that it was going to get up past the, the 20 area against the dollar. Let's see how it is today. But. Uh, it is past the 20. I think it was the 20 and a half. I was thinking that was going to go up and challenge this area. That's why we have these two big circles, just to emphasize the two moves that we thought we thought this was going to be, you know, big, big like that. Let me grab a hold of that. Like that. So it was a nice little move, but it's kind of rolling, trying to roll over this, but that way. And you can see we're in a daily sell now for two days. <clears throat> but we're still holding up in the weekly buy right there. So, uh, again, you know, currencies in general, a lot of products in general don't have a direction. Not like the stock market. The stock market just it seems to be on one massive rampage. It doesn't seem to want to give up. It just keeps on rolling. You know, just, you know, there's just, there's just, there's no, no interest at all in selling the thing off, <laughs> which is interesting in its own right. You know, they just keep on pushing on it. And it keeps on going up. I guess what it comes down to is Mr. Powell wants his job. He's up in February, and they want he wants a job. So you know he's probably going to keep on allowing this market to go up as best as he can. 
Okay, I see now where do we go from here. So we've done oh, we've done all the currencies that we normally do. So uh, let's take a look at the metals complex, and we'll take a look at natural gas at the same time because that's where we're going through stuff. So there's silver. You can see silver is pretty much almost unchanged. Daily buy for a couple days. Weekly is still off. You see that? Still off the hunt. It really makes it hard. This product's like 16 or 17 weeks in a weekly sell. All the way back into May. What does it say on fact check? Uh, 17, uh, no, what, 9? 16 weeks in a sell. 16, so going on its 17th week. Amazing. Just amazing. And then let's check out Platinum. Now, Platinum, I think it was yesterday, it was showing some strength or showing weakness. I don't know what it was, but I noted the spread's of over $800 now. There it is there. Yeah, so it's down again like, uh, it's down like yesterday. And at the same time, um, you know, the weekly doesn't seem to want to change. I think that's like 17 weeks in a cell. <laughs> it's like silver. I think that I honestly they're offset as far as I can tell I think that they're offsetting gold with this stuff so in other words if they have to buy gold they sell platinum or silver or they use it as a pairs off all right now from there we go over to natural gas right there see the natural gas is perking its head up yesterday at one point it was underneath the cell number and the weekly, was, oop, the weekly was trying to do something like that too, just the way gold was, and then uh, it perked up too, and it's uh, you know showing strength, going on a second week of a weekly buy, and it's been in a daily buy since the four hundred dollar area, and you know went up fifty cents in uh, four days or three days, something like that. Went into the buy here, so one, two, three, four, five days. <laughs> wow, they really juiced that puppy. All right, now uh, let's see where do we go from here. So that that basically resolves the currencies. That resolves you know our, our look at the, them and at the, the the commodities, and we've even gone in and look at the the foodstuffs. You know, in other words, grains and uh, cattle and so forth. So now we finished off the metals and the energies. We're going to slip over to the stock indices. How's that? We'll go check out the stock indices. See right uh, there. There we are. And uh, looks like they're putting some pressure on them a little bit here today. And let's go show you. Where is it at? Right there. There we are. And so you can see uh, this is up a dollar. Uh, this is down a dollar right now. This is the S&P 500. Let's make that the whole page. And this is a two Tesla. Is it two Tesla? It's a two Tesla. Okay, so we're running on a two Tesla. So at this point, you see this is very short term. This is intraday bars. So I went into a buy about uh, what was that? Uh, there, it's 23 now, and went into a buy at uh, 11. So 11 minutes ago, 12 minutes ago, went into a daily buy. Showed you volatility signal, volatility signal, and then daily buy. And then it ran from uh, 5.22.25 all the way up to 5.24.50. Is that right? Yeah, 21.50. So it went up two, two, and, two and a quarter points. And you can see now it's trying to, well, it's trying to roll over. Not hitting the zero, zero area, that's for sure, yet. Like that. You can see the zero area right there. There's the zero line. And it's just climbing up and making more new highs from that 20, 75 now, 24.75. And you can see it went to the buy here, a little small sell off that didn't do anything at all, and climbed back up into the buy from here. And then went into a sell here, a couple bars into it, and now we're into the 25s, right? So there it is now, 25 is the high, 25.25 is the high. 25.50 is the high. Yeah, so we're still lifting. 25.75 is the high. 
What's the high for the day? The high of today was 42.25. They were running this thing last night. And let's take a look at it scrunched up. This is the London Open over here. I'll just move that over. Look at that. So in the Asian, after the U.S. market closed, Asian hours took it up. And in the London hours, Frankfurt hours, the you know, Swiss hours, the Milan hours, you know, so forth, sold it down. So they were running this pretty hot and heavy on the upside stock indice. That's the S&P 500. And you can see now it's trying to do its little bounce thing. And now we're up a buck and a quarter. Now let's uh, drift over to the uh, NASDAQ 100. And that's in a one Tesla. Right there. Same situation. And the high today is 677. And it's trading at 604. Is it 604? 607. So it's, it's literally... 70 points, 70, off its high. And they did the same exact thing. Now here's your uh, Asian hours here. And then here's the Milan, the Swiss, the Frankfurt, you know, the London open, and they started selling it down. Yeah. Interesting work there. And then, uh, that's the NASDAQ, or what uh, Dukas Gopi refers to as the Tech 100. And you can trade that, too, on the, on the platform there. Let me just show it to you right there. Um, where are you? There you are. All these indexes are on the, 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 uh, the J4X platform. And then, uh, where do we go from here? That's a daily chart there. Look at that. Just one mad rampage. The Federal Reserve has increased their balance sheet by like $3 trillion over the last 12 months or 10 months, something like that. Uh, the, that's uh, What's the weekly quant look like on the S&P futures, Doc? Let's take a look at that. Because they were going after it last week, remember? And then they seemed to have choked and started to... Uh, you know, go back down. Let's see, right there, and let's take a look at it right there. There we are. And as you can see, the 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 green bounced off the time manifold right there. We were piercing underneath it at yesterday, and then it, it's now it's you know just launching up. Matter of fact, we can let's take a look at it like I did uh, a little while ago. On the um, on what we sent out yesterday morning, where it was yesterday morning. Let me find it real quick. Uh, where's that? Right there. Let's do the download. Say attach and es download. Here it comes. Yes. Uh, no, that's uh, that's yesterday too. So I guess it was Friday they were pressing it down. Can you see that? I think you can. Yeah. Yeah, they were pressing it down on Friday. And let's just minimize that and go back to there. And uh, it must have been Friday they were pre pressing it down. You can see here a couple days in the buy, in a weekly buy since uh, what is that? since uh, June. It's been in a weekly buy since June. You know, just, just, yeah, Mr. Pa Mr. Powell wants that job. He's going to keep this thing firm. They're going to keep it firm. Look, I, I think one of the things that's very clear in that is combined with him wanting the job, uh, and yet Mrs. Yellen has said, oh, we should ha re elect him. More than likely, that makes him. I, I, I was totally convinced that Blinder was going to be the next guy. They wanted Blinder. Maybe they don't want to be blamed for the disaster over time. I don't know. But anyway, what's that's the weekly quant on it right there. Now, the only one that, I, I think the only one of the major indices that's actually showing any weakness, I think it's the Dow at one point was. 
You can see the green line last week closed underneath the time manifold. Uh, but, you know, it's still not minus. And we closed in a daily sell. Now, a couple days in a row, off and on, we've been going into these cells. The Dow seems to be choking off, but nothing really big so far. All right, taking, now the, uh, the uh, S&P is moving back down again, too. Let's take a look at that. And uh, there's the S&P. So they took it up, and now they're just rolling it over again. First topping out there, a little buy for four bars, and now we're back into that cell, and it slid from the uh, 2475 area down to now, where are we at? 22, 217050, 2150, so it's down three points. So that's the S&P 500. All right, traders, I guess we'll be out of here. And uh, we will have to come up with a title for this, too, at the same time. Anybody have an idea what I could call this particular webinar? <laughs> I've been all over the place. There's no doubt about that. So, All right. Well, I guess we'll just do the singing, then. This is Doc from North America saying, Arrivederci. Catch you all tomorrow on Happy to Hump Day. So, Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you, to all our cyber trading friends from Duke Escapi and Chicago Quant. Catch you later.